everybody. Welcome to Collision. Welcome to Toronto. This is my hometown right now, so easy commute for me. I'm super excited to tell you about all the things we're doing with AI at Roblox. And to set the tone, I think obviously Roblox and the Roblox community are fantastic, and I spend every day trying to make them better and support them. I'm not here to sell you anything about Roblox. I think there's a lot of great technology out there in the field. I want to share with you some of the lessons that we've learned about scaling in the social 3D space and about how AI has been transformative for us as a company and for our player base and our creators and how I think it's going to be even more transformative in the days to come. Roblox today is the world's largest immersive 3D platform in which people come together to communicate and to collaborate. Everything on the Roblox platform is UGC, user-generated content. So we are all about the creator community. We don't make any of the 3D content, any of the interactive content. We just provide the platform. There are 32 million different unique 3D experiences today that anyone can freely join and play. Anyone can create one of those themselves as well. And in fact, we see about 90,000 new experiences every day being published. It's sort of like the 3D web. Our users spend on average two and a half hours every day on the platform. It's clearly an important part of their lives and they live there. This is the environment that some people call the metaverse and it's here now and it's growing incredibly rapidly. Historically, Roblox's player base was young children and we have a lot of emphasis on privacy, safety and security on the platform because of that. That's how we were able to capture that really tough, elusive market and retain them. What we are now seeing is that our user base has been aging up and we're retaining them, as well as it's growing rapidly in an older demographic. Today we have over half of our players are above 13, and our fastest growing demographic is 17 to 24 year olds. We have a total of, as of last quarter, 66 million daily active users out of a total player base of hundreds of millions. They're spread around the world. We're in 180 countries. We have 15 languages that we officially support through localization. Players are communicating and being moderated in many more languages as well on top of what our platform directly supports. And in order to power that, we have a combination of a distributed system that does all of the real-time 3D directly on your phone on your console, on your laptop or desktop. So real-time 3D game engine style technology married to internet scale backend. So 100,000 servers around the world, so there's always one close to you to lower the latency. So it's an incredibly complicated system. And on top of that system, we're running two of the most exciting technologies today. So social real-time 3D combined with all different forms of machine learning or artificial intelligence as we'll refer to it. I want to give you a quick glimpse of what it looks like to be on the Roblox platform, say on a mobile device. And when I show you this video, the focus is not look at the 3D graphics. It's not about gaming. It's not about the visuals foremost. It's about the diversity of different kinds of user-generated experiences. So things that the player community is making for themselves and that they can get different kinds of looks, different kinds of interaction, they have different monetization strategies. So let's take a quick glimpse at some of the user-generated content on Roblox. So as you can see, our creators are making many very different kinds of experiences, and they're using a variety of tools. 
We deeply believe that user-generated content, UGC, is the future of almost all entertainment and interactive 3D, and definitely the future of what we call the metaverse. And it's a question of scale and of self-expression. I don't think the future will be made in the way that traditional media was produced, and we've seen this already happen for video and for text and for blogs, where people want to take control. They want to express themselves. They want to make new things. And it's the only way for communities to support themselves at scale is to not feed them content, but give them the tools to make their own content. We have a vertically integrated platform. On that, our creators made in 2022 over half a billion dollars. There were almost two billion sales of not entire experiences, but just avatar virtual clothing. That's become a huge market creating your avatar, making it anyone that you want to be. And our creators have produced incredible amounts of customized code as well as 3D assets. So they're taking advantage of that full vertical stack. There's programming, there's 3D animation, there's video creation, there's assets, there's individual avatars, materials. So the whole stack of everything you can imagine for a real-time 3D ecosystem. 70 of our experiences have over a billion visitors. And so that's entire worlds that have been built on this platform that are themselves interesting platforms at scale for others. To understand UGC, to understand why AI is so transformative, you have to first understand the creators. Here are examples of five different creators on the Roblox platform. And we think this is emblematic of the kind of diverse styles of creation, companies, and monetization that is to come for the future for everyone. Some of these folks, like Zoe and Sam, grew up on Roblox. They joined when they were 10 or 11. They played for a decade. And then they decided that was what they wanted to spend their life doing, was creating in that environment. And they've since launched incredibly successful one-person companies. Sam Jordan makes over a million dollars a year sitting on his couch with a laptop, creating virtual earrings and makeup and dresses. He has rocketed to the upper echelons of fashion creation on an entirely virtual platform as an individual. Zoe created Adopt Me, programmed it herself, learned to program on Roblox. It's now one of those top sort of billion player style experiences. But we also see traditional gaming studios and traditional content creation moving onto Roblox as well. So if you look at Ann Shoemaker's company, Mermaid Life, several other really popular experiences on the platform, that's a 15-person company. That's like a tiny indie studio in traditional game development. But for social 3D, that's one of the bigger ones. And then Marcus's company, The Gang, 120-person studio, equivalent to what you'd expect for one of the major mobile development houses. And they're producing tremendous content on Roblox. Their accounts include Gucci, McLaren sports cars, Vans skatewear. So really top tier brands coming to these studios and moving onto the platform. These are very different from traditional entertainment 3D content creators. They have a very clear idea of what they want. They interact very closely with their user community and fan base. They're relatively small, and they move incredibly fast. They often ship updates to their apps multiple times per week. That's a very different scale than something like a traditional AAA game or Hollywood movie. And so they demand a different style of tool that can meet them where they are, moving very quickly and focused on the content rather than the technology. In that context, let's look at traditional 3D game content. Traditionally, to make real-time 3D, you end up with extremely high quality, but it's very expensive. You might take five years, 2,000 people on a team. Budgets sometimes stretch into the billions, including marketing. This does not scale well. You can't make 32 million experiences like that. You can make a few thousand a year. 
I hope that continues. I love those kind of products myself. But for the metaverse and for UGC, we need a different tool set. So that's what Roblox pioneered with Roblox Studio, which is our free 3D creation tool. It makes programming in our extensions to the Lua scripting language easy to learn, fast and flexible to deploy updates to. It allows easy manipulation and creation of 3D objects and has a full realistic real-time physics engine so that most of the programming in a traditional game is actually pushed out to simulation and we're simulating these virtual worlds. That's where we are today. The future that we're ushering in and that we see for the metaverse is AI powered. In particular, generative AI. So artificial intelligence that can create content, 3D content, code for the interaction, clothing, animations, that's the future. We think that builds on top of our traditional tools. And what it critically does is it lets that new kind of creator, those small, fast moving, close to their community houses, to be able to react really quickly to new ideas. You can go from a, a text prompt to a full 3D experience at some point in the future. And what's really critical about doing this is that those larger studios with traditional tools, like the gang, they're able to keep the quality target that they made with their professional artists, but do it faster. So they can use generative AI to do the work they were doing, but turn it around more quickly and be more responsive to their community and to their customers. Whereas novices who are just entering the platform have a much easier on-ramp because the generative AI allows them to start going from natural language text directly to code and to materials and 3D models without first having to spend a decade learning all the 3D skills. So what we've done is we've closed the gap. We've made it so that the folks who are producing the highest quality can still hit their target but do it faster. And we've made it so that people who are just coming to the platform can get their initial ideas created more quickly. There's still a spread of quality and of expertise, but we've closed that. So generative AI has something that we've embraced as a company over the course of many years, as well as AI and our moderation technology that I'll tell you about in a moment. Two exciting new features that we've shipped just this last spring are AI code assist directly within our free programming editor, Roblox Studio. What AI code assist allows you to do is type a few letters or a few words or a comment describing the part of your program you're about to write, and then like autocomplete, but for whole pages, instead of just one word, it suggests the program with the correct variables swapped in to match the rest of your program with the correct Roblox Lua APIs. And you can then take that suggestion, accept it, edit it further, and customize it, accept it as is, or reject it and write the code yourself. So again, power tool for expert user but for a novice user, instead of having to go look up something in a manual or watch a video tutorial, you instantly have access to an example that's customized to your program of what you're about to write. That's AI Code Assist. We also released the beta of our material generator. Now, when you're doing 3D modeling, you have to create the shape of an object, but you also have to describe the materials. That is more complicated than, say, just an image or a painting. It has to talk about all these different parameters that express how light is going to reflect, how transparency works, detailed bumps on the surface, as well as on Roblox, because we're simulation driven, all the physical properties that will govern how that object's mass and density and elasticity operate. So traditionally, this kind of physically based material authoring requires relatively sophisticated tools, and it's a high barrier to entry. It's why many people have traditionally on Roblox used the built-in set of materials. What we did is made it so that you can type an English text prompt describing the material you would like, set a few sliders for things like scale and realism, and then it'll pop up a grid of options for you to pick from, and you just choose the material you want. So it turns creation into this interactive experience 
that's very rapid rather than painting each pixel of these many different parameters in a traditional tool. We immediately saw a 70% increase in the use of custom materials. These tools are just in beta, but there are actual products people have made with them and shipped already. And that's just a few months into the adoption. Looking farther into the future, two new results, which we haven't talked about publicly yet, this is the first time, that are coming out of our R&D lab. ControlNet is a way of taking generative AI, so tools that you've seen like stable diffusion, and making it so that you can fine tune the results graphically. In the two examples we have here, we told it to generate an image of a robot head, but to make it conform to the silhouette of a pre-existing 3D model. Previously, there was no way to control image generation like this. It would just hallucinate its own details, and you had to fiddle with the prompt. Now you can actually draw or use a 3D model to constrain it. So like I said, we haven't even formally presented this result yet. Uh, you may have seen Reddit's been going crazy with this. Folks love it. Um, one of the cool results I saw from the community was QR codes that look like paintings. And so it kind of hides the QR-ness of them, but they still function. So that's coming soon as a new technology we'll be talking about more from the research lab. Star Coder is another one. It's a step up for our AI code assist. It's a large language model. The key thing about Star Coder is it doesn't just generate program text for you. It's open source. There's previously been no freely available, openly trained, commercially usable large language model. So things like GPT or Llama that you might have heard of, those can't be used openly by other companies due to their licensing requirements. We put together a consortium of universities and industry companies, and we produced a free model that anyone can use and that we're experimenting on ourselves. Our vision for where all of this goes in the future is making entire experiences, not just individual pieces eventually, where you type in a text prompt as if you're just talking to an art director and they're prototyping it for you in real time. Maybe you describe a science fiction setting and out pops this entire space station for you with all the event handlers and animation automatically rigged. To operationalize AI is a huge challenge. It's one thing to make a really cool demo. In order to deploy at scale, you have to get all of the servers working in concert. You have to manage the cost of operations. And you have to critically handle safety and moderation. Today, we're moderating all text communication on the platform through a transformer model, through an AI model, so that we can provide safety to our players. We're tracking facial gestures and animation as well. We've announced that shortly we'll be having natural language translation. You can type in one language, and someone will see it in their own language in real time. And we have a lot more technology coming for our avatars. It's important that when you operationalize, everything is wrapped in a stable economy for the content creators. We've built everything at Roblox for those creators to be able to make their UGC. And a key part of that is having a stable business with monetization and income and providing security and discovery so people can find the content they want. And finally, I think the most critical thing to understand about Roblox's current success and what I think will allow others to succeed in this space is that our first corporate value is respecting our user community. Everything we do has to be deployed thoughtfully and carefully. We've never released a generative AI tool until we had the moderation side available, until we had the discovery side available. So we've been careful to not race out advances as soon as we have them, but to wait until we've figured out how to make it work for the existing content creators to lift them up, as well as attracting new content creators. Everything we've done with our training, with our data, has also been opt-in and been completely transparent to the community. And I think we've successfully earned their trust over several generations to show that everything we do with their data is going to be for their benefit and with their consent. Ultimately, the metaverse, we think, is based on UGC. Because of that, there's unlimited potential. You're harnessing all of the people in the world, not just the people within your company, to create content. And it has to be creator-driven first.
Thank you very much. Enjoy Collision.